Okay, so I didn't know this was a thing, but everyone's doing the mid-year book tag, so here we go. <laughs> so yeah, this is a tag I guess everyone does around this time of year. I've been like, I'm going to still maybe do my quarter wrap up in a couple weeks because I really do still want to go into my statistics, but this seemed like a fun list to go through and as I was like binging everyone else's I really wanted to. Also, as a side note, my cat's not been letting me sleep for months. He's actually on the other side of this camera, being freaking adorable, but she sent me this shirt. So uh, it's like they want food, and then they sleep, and then they sleep, and then they're up from like midnight to six in the morning, which is my life now. But it's okay. I love being a cat mom. Anyways, and you got to see my new mic. I got the idea from Jashana because I wasn't liking any of the other audio stuff. So if you're like, I don't know, a new booktuber like me, this lapel mic was 20 bucks, and I'm currently liking the sound quality. I guess, I don't know if you guys like it, but I feel better about it. But let's get into these questions. So, what is my best book of the year? You guys, if you've been watching my channel for like more than a minute, should already know the answer. But it's The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. I have a whole review up for this book. I adored it. It was so fun. I also love her as an author. She's easily one of my top two, three authors. Uh, her world building, her character work, her plots, just her narrative structure. I love everything she does. And this book is no exception. I, yeah, I just, I'm, I really liked it. So yeah, if you want more of the thoughts, I do, like I said, I have a review on it, and I just, I love it. It's just, hands down, such a great book. All right, so now number two is what is the best sequel? And I swear, these won't all be N.K. Jemisin, but The Broken Kingdoms was my favorite sequel of the year. So this is the second book in the Inheritance trilogy. I do have a recommendation video for that trilogy. I also talk about it a lot. <laughs> I love this trilogy. I especially love this book. This book's probably my favorite in it. And it takes place after the events of the first book. Um, and you're following a blind street artist and how her life changes after she meets a stranger in a dumpster. And it's wonderful. And the narrative perspective through a blind narrator is so well done. And I just, I love it. I love the color of this book. This is one of my favorite colors. And so to have a book this color, like I don't like the new covers that much. So I, while well, I saw it on the cheap, I got uh, the originals because I know I want to own these. So yeah, my favorite sequel. All right, now we're switching it up. The next one is a new release I want to get to. And I recently got Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. And I read Gods of Jade and Shadow by her. I thought it was good, but not as good as I wanted it to be. But this one is in a genre I'm not well read in, and a lot of my friends who have similar tastes to me have been really liking it. And I got this arc from a Goodreads giveaway, which like never happens. <laughs> and I love this cover. So I've never been more pleased by a cover before, I think. I don't know, just all the colors. And I actually have no idea what it's about because I know it's more like a gothic thriller. And I mean, I don't like reading the backs of books for most of the things I read. Why would that change for a thriller? I feel like the least you know, the better. So, and then the next question is a new release you're excited for for the second half of the year. And guys, it, it's Rhythm of War. That's it. Like, I would like to pretend that there are other things I'm more excited about. Like, yes, Burning Gods for the Poppy War is great, but that's more like a four-star series for me. Like, the Stormlight Archive, that's like my wheel of time. Like, for people who, like, are obsessed with that. Like, I will reread this series every time a new book comes out until it's finished. So it, it's like, I'm, I'm always going to be hyped for that series to an absurd degree. I am probably not going to read anything else when that book comes out opening, not opening week, this isn't a movie, but release day week. Yeah, it's the Rhythm of War, and I really, really, really want to see the new American cover. Not that I really love the covers, I just want to see it. And I want to know what the, um, what color it's going to be for these. I kind of want it to be purple. So we got blue, red, and yellow, and I think purple would look nice. Not that I have committed to getting the hardback yet, because there's the new uh, Way of Kings Kickstarter editions, and I've been, if you haven't noticed, getting all of them, because I might not buy a lot of books, but I guess when I do, I like to be a collector about it. So I'm going to get Way of Kings for that, and then it's like, do I need the hardbacks 
and the leather bound? The logical answer is probably no, but we'll see <laughs> what happens. And so five is your biggest disappointment. I have a few books that have disappointed me, but I don't know, this was hard. I wrote down a few things, but none of them, uh, I think of the list I've put down here, it's The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern, and I do have a review for this one. I just, that ending, man. And I think it also disappointed me because it's a long book, and I spent most of my week reading a book that had like no payoff in the ending for me. Like, I can see that book having a good payoff for many other people. I don't think it's an objectively bad book, which is why I think it qualifies for being disappointing for me, if that makes sense. I just, ah. Uh, I hate spending like five to seven days reading something I don't like. That's just not, it's disappointing. <laughs> and so six though is your greatest surprise. And it's going to be two books. I know it's kind of cheating, but whatever. I'm doing The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna, which is a historical fiction light thriller that I did not expect to love. I gave that five stars. I like, I, I rarely give anything outside of fantasy and sci-fi five stars, just like period. Um, it's wonderful. I mean, I don't feel like I need to hype this book up, but it's a book about um, a family that moves to Alaska. The father has PTSD from the Vietnam War, and it's about how this family maneuvers this new life, this new start in Alaska, but also the domestic troubles within the household, and it's really good. I was very invested. I really liked connecting to the main character, who is for part of the book 14 and the other part 17, I thought she was a really smart teenager, which I really like appreciate. So yeah, and then I guess in a similar vein, Catfishing on Catnet. I just finished this book yesterday and I gave it five stars. I don't think I've given another young adult this year five stars. They're usually four, four and a half stars for me, but this one, I really, really, really loved this book. Yeah, so this was, how to explain it. So you have a girl and her mom and they're constantly moving around the country to get away from uh, their, uh, a dad who was abusive. So they're always running away from him because he's now out of jail from stalker charges and things like that. And so the only way that she can have friends is on the website Catnet, which is run by an AI who's like doing this kind of in secret. And the AI and this girl become friends and gosh, it's a wonderful story about friendship and like it's uh, it's so good and it was way more gripping and intriguing and mysterious and like not put downable than I expected it was so good and I at the end it was like maybe implying there could be a sequel and then I saw there's going to be a sequel and I was legit excited so yeah that was a big surprise for me I was I was going to read it because I think I heard about it first from Brie and she said it was really good and I was like, cool, I'll read this. And then I was reading it with Kayla and Rhea, and yeah, both Kayla and I had a great time. We're still waiting for Rhea to finish up to see her thoughts, but yeah, I just... Also, like, it's about a website where you pay with cat pictures to get online, like, cats. Ugh, anyways, and now for the next one is a new favorite author. And I'm gonna have to go with the fabulous Dr. Karen Lord. Ugh stole my heart. I have only read one book by her, so maybe this is premature. But this is her debut book, and I gave it five stars, and I bought it. <laughs> this story was so good. It was so satirical. It was a wonderful, comfy fairy tale folklore story based off, um, I don't know if it's specifically Barbados, but that's where she's from, and it's definitely got Caribbean vibes and Caribbean mythical creatures. And it's about this woman, this human, who has to deal with the interference of these mythical creatures in her life. And she goes on this journey and it is wonderful. And yeah, I just love it. And I love this cover. And I'm so excited to read more of her works. She also writes a lot of sci-fi. I know that Unraveling is another book within this world that I'm excited to get to. So yeah, she's, she's, a, she's a new favorite for me. And so Fictional Crush, I haven't... Fictional crushes are weird. I haven't really had one in a long time, but if you, you had to tell me right now, pick a fictional crush. I guess I'm gonna go with Geralt from The Witcher. But I don't know if that has so much to do with the books I've been reading in The Witcher series or the TV show, but that's what I'm gonna go with. So yeah, Geralt. <laughs> and let's see, 
Ooh, now who's your favorite character? All right, we're gonna go back to the city we became, because it's basically almost anyone in this book, but specifically Bronca. Frickin' love Bronca. She represents the Bronx. She is, I don't know if she's 70 or just older than 70, but she's a 70-year-old lesbian Native American woman running an art gallery in New York, and I frickin' love her and her energy. Uh, but I also, like I said, all the characters in this book are so amazing. So, yeah. Now the next one is books that made me cry. So I'm not good at crying when I read things or watch movies unless they hit very specific, relatable points. Like, I don't know, I don't, what are, what are things that have like legit made me cry? The End of Onward, the movie, made me cry. And what's the movie in, Disney did the movie that was probably not a good representation of what happened, but it was about Mary Poppins and like getting the rights to it. And you kind of get to delve into the creator of Mary Poppins' like complicated relationship with her father. I cried at that movie. I'm blanking on the name. I will put an image up. I, Saving Mr. Banks. I knew if I talked about it long enough, I would get there. But yeah, that movie, someone needed to have warned me. But in terms of books, the closest I've gotten this year is This Is How You Lose the Time War. And yes, I still have this copy, but I think I can finally start returning library books soon. <laughs> but yeah, th this book, I had to sit with it and I had to slow down and read it out loud because it's about a love story that like, it has to go through this tragic moment and I had it, that, that part, it just made me feel. So I don't know if cry, but I don't think a book's made me cry ever, maybe? <laughs> so this is the closest this year so far. And book that made me happy, and that is Check, Please, Volume 1. Again, go read Check, Please. This is your weekly reminder that my channel sponsors you to go read Check, Please. It's so good. Uh, and so now we're on to 12, which is beautiful book. So I think I'm first gonna go with His Dark Materials, because this was gifted to me by The Princess from Castle Library, and it was so sweet. It's one of my favorite series of all times, and I have this beautiful edition, which I really like. I even like it without the cover a little bit, like without the dust jacket. So that's for sure one of them. And I don't know, I, I like all the books I've shown you. Like, I think this is a beautiful cover. Like I said, I really love the color on this one. I already told you Mexican Gothic is objectively gorgeous. So I guess real talk, if we were, we're starting in January probably, right? But in December, I did get this book and it is objectively the prettiest thing that I, one of the prettiest things I've owned. Like it is phenomenally gorgeous. So uh, this is this is definitely up there, but technically got that in December, but I got that like December 30th, <laughs> so don't know if it counts. And now it's asking me what I'm supposed to read for the end of the year. I don't, so I do have like my series TBR that I posted for my summer, so that has some series that I'm focusing on. So obviously I'm focusing on those for the summer and presumably also the fall, because I cannot finish everything. I'm not that amazing, but I also want to read more. By Karen Lord, already mentioned that. I want to read all her things. I want to also want to read more by, or anything, by Nalo Hopkinson. I have one of her books on my Kindle right now, but I really want to read her stuff because Ninjiri and Akita really love her, so I really want to read those. And of course, I fell in love with Exhalation, which somehow didn't make it in this video, but I love Exhalation by Ted Chiang, and he has his first short story collection, Stories of Your Life and Others, so I need to read that. So I guess those are things, obviously Rhythm of War, but that should be obvious if you're here. So yeah, that's my mid-year book freak out, and I, no one else is tagging other people, so I guess I won't, but I guess if you want to do it, do it. Comment down below a cat emoji if you just want me to know you're here, or comment on any of the books that I have read, or if you didn't want to do this video but want to tell me your answers to one of the prompts. I'm good with that. And otherwise, like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.